Welcome back, everyone, to the pandemic caused me to lose some of my hard-earned uh, profits campaign. Me, Dwarf Pete. Where in the last uh, episode, we dealt with the ramifications of the Serpent's Rot by spending, oh, I'd say, 30k in order to develop a cure for it, only for Segdir to actually distribute the cure. Over jokes on him, he's still burning. Yes, the serpent's uh, serpent spine right now is actually the entire world is just red, and Gwed is just Gwed's not recovering. <laughs> They're done. Same with Segdir. They're pretty, pretty burnt. So I'm hoping today we can cross a couple um, missions off the list. Uh, also, small announcement, so I had been working towards a strategy for the Kobolds, and I decided to update the game to 1.33 to try out the Hales patch, just to make sure the strategy I had planned would work and I wouldn't have to re-record the whole series. <laughs> Always annoying when that has to happen. Um, it turns out there's another Kobold that got added in with the Hales patch, and they are a country called Balrigin. Ball region, and I believe they are located. Uh, one of these provinces is where they're located, and their mission tree, from what I can gather, is both complete and it's about resurrecting a dragon. That's that's what I was able to gather, and so what I had been planning to do for the Cobalt Run, which and I'll now spoil it, is a dark scale run who start in this province called New Hovel. And you play... If you thought the regular kobolds in the Dragon Coast were terrible, uh... Dark Scale's even worse. <laughs> With the small exception that they do get the Dwarvar Claimer buff, and I was making good use of that in my strategies. So, the question I would like to pose to everybody is... Um... Would you rather I play a kobold that's more narrative-focused, such as Bal Regine, um, in the Holas area, which would be an area we've never been to. In in fact, an area very few uh, YouTube have been to. But uh, the other choice, of course, would be Dark Scale, which I had been planning to do, in which basically the story would... They don't have a mission tree, and they wouldn't get one until they form Cobalt Sun all the way over here. And so the mission... The, the story we'd make for ourselves then would be us finding a way to migrate slash conquer our way all the way back to the Dragon Coast. And yeah, I'll leave that up to you guys. Whichever one gets the highest uh, vote count uh, will play. Without further ado, let's get into today's episode. And we've already got a mission to start off with. And I, I was checking, the Servant's Rot still hasn't... Uh, it's going to stick with us for another 10 more years, until 73. Oh boy. Lucky us. <laughs> the reason I don't like it is because it gives dev costs of 75%. Ick. But, the hardy Gelcalis breed has performed admirably, seemingly perfectly suited to the mountainous foothills of the Serpent Spine. Our rangers have also discovered that they are more sure-footed and less skittish than our Vale Rams, especially around gunfire. We are at a crossroads. We can take advantage of the innate nature of the Galcalis breed to retool our ramp cavalry, or should we stick with what we know? <laughs> we have spent many long years with the Galcalis breed, enough to establish a home flock of our own. We have learned much about them. It seems that the majority of the rumors about them are true. They are indeed extremely hardy and can get large enough to carry two dwarves, Whoa, two dwarves comfortably, though they are still smaller than horses. They are also much less skittish than their Vale cousins, and our rangers report that even gunfire does not phase them, used to the shrieks of harveys as they are. Uh, wait a minute. If you took rams away from the harveys, wouldn't they become skittish to gunfire? W whatever, whatever. However, they're... Adaptations to rugged terrain makes them slower and less comfortable on the open field. Oh. And they are both slower and worse at charging than our existing Graham Corps. Oh. 
We have a difficult decision to make. Should we retool our ram cores to take advantage of the Galcalis breed as our primary war mount, or stick to our trusty steeds of old? Our choice will impact whether we can progress, yada yada yada. So, we can either choose the shock route or the fire route. And if you don't know what this is referring to, it's referring to the uh, pips that each uh, side of the tree gets. Now, I don't know why you would ever go with the fire route. Although, looking ahead in the tree, these modifiers do look pretty tempting. It looks like this fire would get it on par with an infantry, which is interesting to say the least, and you could also field more of them with the cav to infantry ratio, so you'd never have to worry about it. Alternatively, we get uh, flanking ability and shock damage, which uh, I believe our flanking ability right now is at... Uh, 50% and it's soon going to go up to another 50%, uh, 100%. So, flanking range just means, by default, each cavalry can attack two uh, spaces away from where it is. Let me see if I can find an ongoing battle to help explain my point. No, oh, I guess there are no wars in the world. Shame. <laughs> I'll explain it later on, but uh, if we could potentially go up to, say, 200%, eh, like 150% flanking range, then we could attack up to, I think, four? No, five. Five tiles away from where we are. I mean, one cav unit could hit five ranks deep. And that's pretty good. Additionally, it also gives shock damage, which directly increases this pip count. Alternatively, we get the fire, which would be, which covers the weakness of Cav. So, I'm actually not sure. You know, coming into this, I had assumed the shock one would be much more, um, would be the way to go. However, looks like the fire one is tempting. Uh, the final way to solve this question can be asked, where is my pips in the future going? So you can best think of the uh, the way damage is actually calculated in EU4 as a combination of which phase do I have the most pips in? So you can see for cavalry they have 3 shock as opposed to 0 0.5 fire. That means we're, if all else was equal, all of their modifiers stayed the same. That would mean we would deal six times as much damage in the shock phase as we did in the fire phase. Now, there's also multi multipliers on top of that that are influenced by these pips individually. And this is where we get the term pips. Inside of the, the unit type. And so, what this tells me here is that we deal about three times more offensive shock than we do fire once we get to the latest stage of the game. Which tells me shock is what we need to be worrying about, since that's... Uh, my philosophy is that you should never improve the weakness of a unit, you should always increase the strength of a unit. Because I don't want... I want specialists more than I want well-rounded uh, units. I really want to punch through an army if I'm attacking. I don't want to stay in the battle a long time, because that would incur a ton of casualties for me. So, shock it is. Why don't you talking to explain? Cavalry go slam slam. <laughs> okay, back to work. And we are waiting on a truce until 67 with Bissartan says. Until we can attack him. And what is this? <laughs> As anyone who has been on a ledge will tell you, one can see so much more when they look at something from above. This poses an interesting question, however. Can this be harnessed and artificially reproduced, this high-altitude observation? 
Through careful experimentation has been proven possible to replicate on our own terms our brilliance brilliant Brillites? Huh, that's an interesting way to describe intelligentsia. Have come up with a device that they lovingly refer to as the balloon boost pack, which accomplishes what the name might imply. A pack placed on the artificer's back and secured with a harness contains a balloon that might be unfolded and heated sufficiently, such that it allows the wearer to float. Ooh, that's actually pretty cool. It will slowly slink without constant heat, so it is not usable for anyone incapable of using... Conjuration to reduce the fire required to fly? What? That's... That's quite a big drawback. <laughs> I... <laughs> so unless you're a mage, you can't use the... the... the device? By integrating this device within our forces, it will be possible to gain accurate, viewer-confirmed reports of enemy movements. So in other words, they figured out drones. About 400 years before they would be invented. So, what do balloon boost packs give? Wow. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> Maneuver is among the worst pips you can have on a general. And we've already got pretty much everybody with maxed out maneuver. By the way, I rolled some new generals, got another five seizure. Oh yes. And we do not actually have enough artificer capacity. Because... why? The mages have too much influence. Yeah, yeah. It's about how it works. <laughs> and the artificers don't have enough. Okay, when did the ma- why did the mages have... They have it until 67. And our truce with Nersha Steer ended. He did go zombie, so I do want to kill him. Tempting. But what's this? Ram cavalry has been an integral part of our identity as Ram Steel Dwarves for generations. It is only fitting to formally establish a new officer's school and grounds dedicated to the training of our war rams. Now that the direction of our ram corps has been decided. And we get uh, cavalry cost. That's actually decent. I believe that applies to both the uh, one-time use cost and the maintenance cost. And this area gets the hidden training fields till the end of the game. And yet another one. Barding, or simply mount armor, serves as both decoration and protection. The heyday of heavy cavalry now over. Literal heavy army is increasingly relegated to the sidelines as maneuverability and ability to stop a stray bullet gain its importance. As such, we must invest more heavily in all mithril barding. The metal's lightness and durability will make our rams have free reign over the battlefield. And this gives us 25% if we have the trading, which we do. And we're probably going to go up by 10%. Bada bing. Bada boom. Yeah, 50% com cavalry combat ability. Okay, next up we need 10 uh, provinces with farm states. I know how to do that. We're just going to do it the lazy way. Boop. <laughs> when you don't want to dev, you just take already dev provinces, and yeah. Ugh. Yeah, we are a bit over the relation point limit. But not having to deal with coalitions is worth not having any dip points. Uh, speaking of not having any dip points, as my... Uh, diplomat comes back from Sulfgelka. Uh, I will increase my dip rep so we can get 
our Lord Stoon done faster. And looks like he'll be done at 87. 22 years. Joy, joy, joy. Oh, and I've totally forgotten. We can upgrade the Dwarvar rails. So we will. Okay. And uh, what now, Bjarnrik? What do you want? I don't want to help you. Do you seriously need my help here? Yeah. Fine, I will give you an army. I will give you the five siege guys so you can leave me alone. Just get out of my swamp. I mean, I guess I want the flung head land. Not really, though. Ooh, you're good. And how is the economy recovered? Ooh. <laughs> Virgil Kazanad reached level 8. <laughs> Still 160 to develop it. Yeah, the economy is definitely in some pain. Partially because I forgot to re increase the stability to keep uh, it active, and yeah, that wasn't a smart idea. That was also not a smart idea. <laughs> All right, new rule. No more new provinces get stated. None more, please. And we're only a casual 10k in debt. And uh, Vesartan says is expelling orcs. That's almost enough to make me not want to attack you. I'll give it to you there. Wait, what orc provinces do you have? Well, you don't have any, but either way, <laughs> you're expelling them. Therefore, you are a friend of mine, but I will have to attack you. Don't want to attack you, but you have land that I want. RPN lens looking like a, a protected nature preserve almost. Ooh, good to know. I can use him to reset my truce timer though with him if I need. Nice. Tell me I didn't see it. There we go. Three stability. The days of the Magic 19 are over. Ooh. And I actually don't remember what this looks like. Okay, so we go from Dwarvar rails to upgraded rails. Which give basically double of everything, I think. Yeah, more than double in some cases, like with friendly movement speed, they give negative 20 div cost. Uh, supply limit plus two, that's huge. That means I can probably travel 80 widths along them. 
Gives institution spread, that's also huge. And it gives statewide governing cost. Oh man, that is juicy. Wait for him to lock. That is also juicy. <laughs> We have very similar s colors. I think I should attack him again for uh, similar similar color CB. Okay. Now the mages are below 35. That means we should have... Yes. Enough artificer capacity to start developing again. Uh, give me something to do with Cav, please. I want to see the Cav combat ability get even higher. And this war is surprisingly difficult because I don't know what I have taken and what I haven't. And uh, is it time to attack the Sarn says yet? Nope. When? Ten. Ten of this. Tenth month of the year. Okay, there's goes Ashenade. Excellent. We can't stop the progress of... Wait a minute, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Meanwhile, in another country, a different branch of the Hammerbeard family is in dire straits. With their country destabilized, they now struggle to cling on to power. If we do not help them now, their situation might worsen significantly. What is the best course of action? Gore Vazenbrog is Hammerbeards? What? I didn't know this. <laughs> okay. Well, that's new. Uh, can I claim your throne by any chance? I don't even remember what it's under. Uh... Oh, Ancestor Worth. Dang it. <laughs> it doesn't allow for it. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> we'll also ally Virkal Gulan. Because I have a feeling, yeah, the laws of value compel me to vassalize him. Also, where is Bjarnrik? I'm fighting this war for him, pretty much. Okay. Now we can go to war with Bissart, says. And we shall declare for Gulbu. And immediately sick our troops on him. And I'll just leave that army alone. I have faith that nothing he has can touch me. And we're almost out of mill points. What do you want to do about that? Not get terrible generals, like so.
Okay, and from this war, I literally only want one thing, and it's disgusting. That was a poor use of that joke. I apologize. <laughs> Dwarves only want one thing, and it's disgusting. Dame's tier. Gold, Dame's Tear, Mithril, and other things. These are what a dwarf loves. What he wishes to the ancestor gods for Yuletide that he gets. Oh, decent, decent. He can feel the a 30, a 60 stack. Decent. But can it defeat my blue eyes white dragon? That's the question. <laughs> you know, that might actually... I wouldn't be surprised. I sincerely hope somebody that designed the Balrogin mission tree included a blue eyes white dragon Yu-Gi-Oh joke. Because if you're summoning a dragon, you gotta include a blue eyes white dragon joke. Nice! And finally, after suffering... Countless untold lost profits. The Serpent's Rot has been totally eradicated from our country. Our people can live without fear once more. Across our nation, the people are jubilant. Music fills the streets, and the nobility and commoners alike rejoice. Um, I disagree with that. How about y'all get back to work? Music fills the streets should be in the, the factories. And the nobility and the commoners should also be in the factories. Uh, t tomorrow we will mourn, but today we celebrate the return of prophets. <laughs> and we've captured Sad Cuz. <laughs> Great name. Okay, why can't I take this on? <laughs> Tell me I didn't upgrade one. <laughs> there we go. Okay, sheep are normally grazers, eating the marginal grasses and weeds that cover our pastures and line our fields. We should experiment with feeding our great war rams with the finest grains and fungi we normally reserve for our citizens. Oh, to see if we can increase their hardiness and energy in battle. Yes, do so. This will increase the profits of the grain industry. Something Big Grain doesn't want you to know about. <laughs> our experimentation with more hardy feed has greatly increased our War Ram's energy and power. Who would have thought? Maybe the addition of small bits of mithril into their diet will infuse our Rams with its strength and lightness. Yes, let's, uh... Let's... Backwards poison them. <laughs> and so now we have 55 cavalry combat ability. I'm trying. trying to pump those numbers up and for the last mission in this tree we need a province with dames tier and i am working towards it takes time uh tell me i've got an extra army laying around nope yarnrick for the love of god get out of, for the love of the ancestor gods get out of this war i have no reason to be in this war No, that's sad, cuz. <laughs> oh, that makes me sad. Alright. And we'll just carpet siege up in here. I would barrage and siege, but I've been kind of uh, scarred from the last time we attempted that.
Stay in one spot, so I can kill you. There, like that. <laughs> He's got a big stack over there. And almost. We might be able to just get out with this. Yeah, I don't think it'd be too hard. I kind of want a corridor. Well, I want the gold. Mm -hmm. Question is, do we allow sun elves in our... in our empire? To that, I'm not really sure the answer. Do we allow sun elves? No, we should, uh, we should force them to go back to the deep woods. <laughs> Let's purposely make more deep woody in elves. Oh, did I forget to attack you? No, not yet. And I can't figure out which is owned by which here. You've done an excellent job, Roji area. Alright, and I'm going to have to kill him manually, aren't I? It's been this much of a pain. <laughs> and Sigir hired out troops, even though he has very few remaining. After the, uh... The incident known as the Serpent's Rot. What? Oh, hell no. You can't... No, no, no. I'm out. Ronrick, you figure it out, man. I'm done. Nuh-uh. As soon as my land gets sieged... How did he even get here? Is there a hole? Wait, what? I'm confused. How did he get there? Oh Alright. We're adding yet another fort to the system. <laughs> Yarnrick, it's your war. You deal with it. Stop calling me in. Deal. <laughs> I draw the line when my own land gets damaged. Okay. And then we can take two here. And yeah, we can actually create a small corridor. And the upgrading of the rail network continues. Now can I get out? Nope. Hohedavar goes to level 2. Hohodis himself would be proud. There's the truce with the core and a leg. Do I really want to attack him again? Like, I, I feel like I've done all I want. I feel like I've significantly punished them. If they join a coalition, I'll attack. Until then, just leave me be. Drrrr. 
<laughs> right as it finished developing, it's destroyed? Are you serious? Grr. For that, I shall take away your land. <laughs> A level six problems, too. Okay, so we've now expanded the point where we might be able to attack Sigdir. But I think that is a um a story we will leave for the next episode. As always, thank you for watching. Do your civic duty as a dwarf. Vote for which uh, Cobalt Nation you'd like us to play. And I will see you in the next episode.